Welcome back to DIY Hi-Fi. In this video, we're gonna be building a very cool new budget kit offered by the Jewel Fidelity Company. Now, you're probably wondering who the Jewel Fidelity Company is. Well, they're a small company from the Midwest with a huge inventory. These guys cater to the DIY market, offering their own new and used high quality crossover components like inductors, capacitors, and resistors. They also produce their own drivers, as well as offering other brands like Dayton. What makes the kit we're building special is that all of the parts used are their very own. What's better is that all of the proceeds from this kit go directly to supporting the Midwest Audio Club. They host events that help keep the DIY speaker community alive and thriving. They did send me this kit at my request, but I was not paid and I won't earn a commission if you decide to support them. I'll leave links to everything in the description. Now I have to admit the thumbnail was a bit misleading as the kit is actually just $145. This means you get everything like drivers, ports, crossover components, pre-cut baffles. The only thing you'll need to do is cut and glue up the back half of the enclosure. Even with the veneer and lacquer I chose, I still came in around $200. I'll provide measurements and subjective opinions later on. With the performance of these, I feel like it's a great value. Our enclosure is going to be really simple and straightforward. We'll need about half a cubic foot. This helps give the cabinet really nice proportions. I'll run a single window brace down the center to combat any panel resonance. Now that I've worked out my panel sizes, I'm ready to make my cuts. While I wait for my enclosures to dry, it's a great time to get started with my crossovers. The parts that come with this kit are really pretty nice. We have nice heavy gauge inductors, wire wound resistors, and metallized polypropylene capacitors. The crossover is really easy to put together. We've got second order filters on both the tweeter and the woofer with an L pad on the tweeter circuit. I'll wind my circuit blocks up first and then determine the best layout. I'll need to be sure I keep the inductors far apart, but also keep things small enough to fit through the woofer opening. Lately I've been using this old vinyl flooring for my boards. It's thin, strong, and lightweight. I'm going to do point to point soldering and then use zip ties to anchor everything down.
With the enclosure now dry, I can begin working on the last few things. I've got two holes to cut for ports and terminals. I'm using my router, but the great thing is that both of these have a flange, which means you could also use a jigsaw, and if your holes don't come out perfect, it won't be an eyesore. After a light sanding, I'm ready to move on to my finish. I'll be using a cherry veneer for this. In my line of work, I use contact cement on a daily basis, so I take any chance I can to avoid it. I've found that using tight bond wood glue is a lot more forgiving. I'm able to take my time and line up the grain exactly where I want it and apply heat when I'm ready. With contact cement, you really get one shot at it and that makes things stressful. The ironing does take a bit more time, but I think it's well worth it. When my pieces are glued down, I'll come back with my trim router and zip off the excess. Keep in mind that all of this can be done by hand using a blade. This cherry veneer is relatively soft and can easily be cut with and against the grain. They do make shallow flush trim bits that will trim the driver recess, but I don't have one right now, so I'll be using a blade. I wanted to try to contrast the finish with the aluminum cone woofer. I used the gray stain from Minwax, but it came out way too blue. I decided to come back with thinner and wipe it away until I was happy with the color. This isn't what I set out for, but I wound up happy with how it turned out. It's got great depth and it really makes the driver stand out. I'll let this dry and top it off with a semi-gloss lacquer. With a two-way design, our woofer will be playing up pretty high. This means we'll want to add some damping material to handle the standing waves. The kit came with some really nice material for this. A lot of people will actually apply this when they're assembling the cabinet for easier access.
I tried several times to take measurements of these, but the wind has been relentless for the last few weeks here on the plains. I did take an impedance reading just to be sure everything was wired up correctly. Thankfully, the designers have published all of their measurements for us. With the overlays, we can see that they've crossed right around 2000 Hz. Crossing lower like this means really good things for directivity. Distortion looks great all the way down to the base region, which is totally normal for a reflex design like this. For subjective listening, I used all kinds of music. There really wasn't anything these couldn't handle. There's a small hump in the bass region, which gives these a really rich, punchy sound. If you're looking for neutrality, a bit of EQ will easily bring this down. But I personally enjoy the sound of them. It blends really well with this tweeter. I also use these for TV and movies, and dialogue came in crystal clear. This means these could work well as an LCR for smaller home theater use. The soundstage is really wide, and the center imaging is lifelike and razor sharp. Overall, these are a 10 out of 10 for their price category. They're very easy to build, and the performance from them is nothing short of stellar. The quality parts used in this kit make it a great value. I want to thank everyone for watching this far and supporting DIY Audio. Check out Jewel Fidelity for your next DIY project. I'll leave links down below. Again, this is not sponsored, and they are not affiliate links. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.